Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And today I wanted to just make kind of a quick guide showing you how you can set up and run your own Kafka environment locally uh, so that you can test, develop Kafka streams, Kafka scripts without needing to stand up and run a full production setup but run it in such a way that it mimics how a production setup would run so that you can easily port your work done on your local machine to a more production setting, bring it to where you're actually running Kafka in production, but have a nice safe controlled environment on your local machine to run and test new scripts with and develop on. Um, so that's what I'm gonna show you in this video today. I'm gonna show you how to set up Kafka, uh, consumer and brokers, the CLI tools, access to Kafka UI, um, bring in Zookeeper as well for managing the metadata and coordinating the brokers, um, as well as showing you also how to use Craft, which is the new Zookeeper list option for also managing the metadata um, and coordinating brokers. So that's what we're gonna get into today. Uh, if you like these videos, please like and subscribe. And if you're feeling generous, join my Patreon as well, um, where you can see videos up to a week early. Um, but without further ado, let's get into it and build out our Kafka folder. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is just open a new terminal window, cd into my desktop directory, and then just make directory, or cd to data guy as well, make directory Kafka standup. And then cd into Kafka standup, and then one, well within here actually I can run anything. Um, now we're gonna make sure you have a few things installed. So number one, have Docker installed. Um, I already have Docker installed, so don't need to do that. Um, but if you don't have it installed, make sure you have it, you download it, um, because that's what we're using to stand up and run Kafka locally is Docker and Docker Compose. Um, and then you're also going to want to uh, just pip install, or sorry, app get curl, or sorry, brew install curl, which I believe I already have. So if you don't have curl um, JQ, which I will just kind of go through in a second. So here, installing curl, updating it, making sure it had all the latest dependencies. Um, and then we are also going to install, brew install JQ. Um, and JQ is just a package for interacting with Java, um, making Java queries. And then we're going to also brew install Kcat. Um, and then you'll also want to, or I already have this installed. Um, and then also uh, make sure you, if you have Postman, um, try to just set up a Postman environment. I have one already, so uh, I'm just gonna go create a new collection. This is really just for testing things. So here, just have a new collection that we'll use, um, but not yet. Uh, and then also going to need to brew install Kafka. Um, and I'm pretty sure I already have this installed, but let's see. No, I don't. Awesome. So reinstalling and updating that. Um, so make sure you have Kafka, and this should also contain the command line interface tools as well for actually interacting with Kafka. Um, so pause this while this finishes downloading. And then once that's done downloading, we can get started building our Docker Compose file that we will use for um, actually building and running Kafka. So here within our directory, we're just going to create a new file, file Docker compose.yaml and then within here I'm just going to post in, paste in a pretty standard uh, setup for just spinning up a docker uh, image with Kafka. Um, here we're importing Zookeeper from the Confluent hosting directory also influent, or importing Kafka from the Confluent directory here um, and then setting our ports to be that we're going to use for our Kafka environment to be 9092 Zookeeper is going to use 2181, um, and then you have here the listener port, so the advertised listener is going to be localhost 9092. Uh, the Zookeeper Connect endpoint will be Zookeeper 2181, um, and then I'm just going to leave the topic replication factors all at one because I'm not trying to do any high scale processing on my local machine. Um, and then here for the Kafka UI, here we're just going to import the Kafka UI from the Prevectus Labs uh, repository, set the port to be 8080. So when we log in, we'll go to uh, localhost 8080. Um, and then we have our Kafka bootstrap servers spinning up on Kafka 9092 um, and Zookeeper again on 2181. Um, so after you set that all up, um, you know, if you have Docker installed, now comes time to actually start up and, and run this Docker Compose after we save it. So we'll save this. And then once we're done with that, we will then run docker compose up um, and compose this docker compose file. Um, and then once this is complete, so again, I'll pause the video here while this is just gonna pull the images, download and install them and start them up. Um, then it'll 
pop up um, and we can verify that these services are actually running. So boom, now the all our services are up and running. Um, and now we can verify that just by typing in docker compose ps and you, you should see all these services we just created appear here um, within terminal. Um, and then what we can do is also validate that each of the services are running. So if you want to log in um, and validate your COC environment is actually running, you can docker exec in there. Um, and that didn't work right. Just one second. I'm using Podman, so I actually cannot um, docker exec because that's not how I'm running it. Um, or uh, sorry, orb stack. But if you want to go look at the underlying logs, um, you can always go in here, um, look at the logs and instead of needing to exec in, that's honestly what I do most of the time anyways. Um, and then what we can do is go open the UI. Um, so here, if we go to open a Chrome window on localhost 8080 up here, you'll see the Kafka UI local. Um, so here we can see our one cluster that just went offline for some reason. So I'm going to figure out what the heck just happened there. Um, but here we have an environment. So now within the UI, what we can do is actually start creating some of our own topics. Um, so if I go like this, bring in here, you'll see I can go up to the topic location on the left here and just click add a topic. Boom, create new topic one, set the number of partitions, sync replicas, time to retain data, and any custom parameters you want to add here as well. Hit create topic and now you'll have a new topic available uh, within your Kafka environment. Um, so here you know we have clusters and then also go to your consumers here. And so those we can't create via the UI, so we'll actually need to create those separately. But before we do that, I want to show you how you can also run Kafka without the Zookeeper mode and use the new craft feature. So we'll go back into our VS Code um, and then we'll kill this current environment. So docker compose down. And then here, this will just kill all our current Kafka uh, environments. And then if you want to do a full thorough clean, you can do a down V um, and that'll clean up the data and delete any volumes as well. Um, so now what we want to do um, is let's update this docker compose file and just have it contain uh, the Kafka with craft. So here what we'll do is just replace our previous do uh, docker compose file with now just pulling from Kafka, CP Kafka with the craft combined logs. Um, and here this is going to now use craft as our uh, broker manager instead of Zookeeper. Um, and so I much simpler local setup I and mean, you know a lot of people are moving away from, from Zookeeper. So if you're trying to as well, good way to do it. Um, and then what we'll do is just type in Docker Compose up again. And this will create and run all of our uh, our Kafka environment again. Um, so here we're just going to see all different logs for starting up the Kafka environment. Um, and then in a second, it will you'll be able to open the UI again. Um, and I can show you that as well. So we'll pause this. And now we can go back into the UI and see our dashboard um, with the cluster back online. Um, so that's how you set up your environment, how you have a basic cluster running. Um, now, finally, just want to show you how you can now add some Kafka uh, producers and consumers. So here, what we'll do is I'll just show you how to add a simple producer file. So I'll just call this producer.py. Um, and also, we're going to just open up a new terminal because we already have a Kafka cluster running in that terminal. And pip install confluent Kafka explicitly. And this will install the Python client for Kafka as well. Then what we'll do, and I'm not going to spend too much time on the code here because this is really just about the setup. Um, we're going to import the producer object, time, set the bootstrap servers to localhost 9092. Um, and then this is just going to either say, hey, message produced successfully or not. Um, and this is just going to produce, hey, 10 events um, for this producer object. And then to a test topic, right? So if we go to in our here, test topic, set it to one partition, create topic, and then go back into here. Um, and we'll also create a Kafka consumer now to consume from that topic. So here, our New Kafka consumer. Um, did I save this properly? Okay. Cool. Um, so here, go create a consumer.py. And then what we'll do is just bring in some consumer, simple consumer code as well. So here. 
Later for message, again, just pointing it to our uh, topic, test topic on localhost 9092. Basic logic here as well, not really important. Um, and then within the UI, so if we then put on um, consumer.py, or just start running it this way, much easier. And pip install Confluent Kafka. Um, so basically, all you'll do now is just start these Python scripts, and they'll start acting as producers and consumers within your environment. Um, so that's really all I wanted to cover today. Just quickly show you how you can get set up uh, using Kafka locally on your own machine for testing. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it helpful. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Data guy out.